morning. We have general questions. Question one, Ken McIntosh. Uh, thank you. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will respond to the insult to injury campaign and ensure that war pensioners are treated fairly. Minister Jimmy Hepburn. Thank you, President Officer. We are exploring with COSLA options to create a fairer system for charging for social care, and we will be looking at this aspect as part of that work. Scottish Government officials are also in close contact with officials in the Department of Health on this issue. Ken McIntosh. Can I thank the Minister for his answer? Can I first of all ask him whether he agrees with me that it is entirely unfair that we should treat uh, our veterans who are injured before 2005 in a different manner than those who are injured after 2005? Can I also ask him what, government the, what work the Government is doing to explore how much it will cost to rectify this anomaly? Jamie Hepburn. Can I uh, thank Ken McIntosh for bringing this issue to the Chamber? President Officer, we all uh, owe uh, our uh, veterans a debt of gratitude, particularly those who have been injured in uh, the line of duty. Taking uh, the uh, second uh, part of his uh, question, uh, first, the uh, uh, government is undertaking uh, work to assess the financial impact on uh, local authorities uh, on a number of proposals around uh, care charges, including uh, this particular issue. In terms of the differential treatment of uh, veterans who have been uh, injured in the line of battle, I would uh, make the point that that change uh, came around not as a consequence of a decision by this government, but it was a decision by the last Labour government who changed uh, to the uh, new scheme uh, from uh, the uh, previous scheme. So that's not something that, of course, this government has control over. John Scott. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Minister will be well aware from my correspondence to him and from others of the unfairness in the financial treatment of those wounded in the service of their country before 2005 and after 2005, which is clearly in breach of the Armed Forces Covenant. What discussions has he had with the British Government, with COSLA, with the Armed Forces organisations such as the British Legion? And is he minded to, and if he is minded to address this situation, when will he be able to do so? Yes, sir. It, well, I thank uh, Mr Scott for uh, the question. Uh, going back to my initial answer to uh, Mr McIntosh, we are actively exploring this issue uh, with COSLA. We would be happy to speak to uh, a range of stakeholders. I do recognise uh, the concerns that have been uh, raised by uh, the uh, British Legion and uh, Poppy Scotland. I do go back to uh, the point that I made uh, earlier that this uh, change was not as a consequence of a decision made by this uh, government. It was the UK government that changed the terms of uh, support for uh, those who have been uh, injured in the line of battle. Question number two, Mark Macdonald. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what information it has on the average length of time taken to process applications for protecting vulnerable group scheme membership for people seeking employment in the care sector. Minister Fiona MacLeod. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Mr Macdonald asked specifically about the care sector. Information about the sectors from which PVG applications are submitted is not gathered by Disclosure Scotland. PVG applications are processed as they arrive and no application is given priority over any other. Disclosure Scotland's service level agreement is to produce 90% of all types of disclosures for a correctly completed application with no further inquiries within 14 calendar days. This is measured from the day the application is received to the day of dispatch. For the week ending 15th of February 2015, Disclosure Scotland processed 99.9% .9 of applications within 14 calendar days. Mark MacDonald. I'm grateful to the Minister for, for that answer. Um, some organisations in the care sector in Aberdeen, where I represent, uh, have indicated that the length of time being taken to process PVGs can lead to individuals seeking alternative employment, perhaps in an area where a PVG is not required. Uh, will the Minister examine whether there are issues uh, that are affecting the care sector Sector specifically, and whether some form of fast tracking may be appropriate, particularly in areas such as Aberdeen, where there are difficulties in recruitment and retention to the care sector. Minister. As I said in my earlier answer, in some instances it is necessary for Disclosure Scotland to contact other agencies to determine if there will be any inclusions on the individual's PVG scheme record from those sources. When this happens, the period of time to process a PVG disclosure can be longer. Disclosure Scotland closely monitors the performance of external information suppliers and works to ensure that such requests are fulfilled as quickly as possible in the interests of both the applicant and the prospective employer. If Mr Macdonald wants to get in touch with the numbers from particular organisations in his area, I will inquire further. Question number three, Bob Doris. To ask the Scottish Government when it last met the NHS Lanarkshire and what matters were discussed. Minister, what do you want? Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Ministers and government officials regularly meet with representatives 
from all health boards, including NHS Lanarkshire, to discuss matters of importance to local people. Bob Doris. Uh, thank, uh, thank Mr. for that answer. I'm concerned about both the proposals and the quality of current consultation being conducted by NHS Lanarkshire in relation to GP out of our services, who will see the end to the use of the Victoria Infirmary in Glasgow. Can the Minister confirm that new, bound, new health board boundaries need not be a barrier to the continued use of the Victoria Infirmary? And whilst I personally would urge NHS Lanarkshire to reconsider its current proposals, does the Minister agree with me that any final decision by NHS Lanarkshire should be delayed until the Scottish Government completes its national review of outs of our services? Minister. I thank Bob Doris for his question. I appreciate that there is concern locally around the board's review of out of our services. All health boards keep their services under review to ensure that they are of the highest quality. I am aware that NHS Lanarkshire is carrying out a review of out of hours service, which started on 6 January and is due to conclude on 6 April. I have been assured that all stakeholders will continue to be fully engaged and involved as this, is important work, as this important work is taken forward. The Scottish Government is liaising with NHS Lanarkshire and is being kept up to date with the progress of their review. And I would expect the outcomes of their review to be in line with any recommendations arising from the Scottish Government's recent announcement, nas uh, announcing na National Out of Hours Service Review. Question number four, Margaret Fraser. Um, to ask the Scottish Government how it assists farmers who wish to remove silt from riverbeds. Cabinet Secretary, Richard Lockhead. The Scottish Government and the Scottish Environment Protection Agency, in association with the National Farmers Union of Scotland, have been proactive in developing guidance to inform farmers what actions can be taken on removal of silt from riverbeds, and that guidance is available. Lord Fraser. Uh, I, th I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his response. I have been contacted by a number of East Perthshire farmers. Uh, I know it is a view reflected in other parts of the region I represent who have been affected by flooding, who are concerned that uh, watercourses are silted up and they have great difficulty when it comes to removing uh, the silt and other debris, and they feel that uh, the approach from SEPA is still overly bureaucratic. I wonder what more the Scottish Government can do with SEPA to try and simplify this process. Minister. Well, I would urge the farmers in Perthshire to, to meet the local SEPA officials and discuss their concerns, because the guidance which was issued early last year was intended to address these very concerns and explain that action can be taken without applying for a licence, albeit there are some rules that have to be adhered to, but that is clearly laid out in the guidance that was made available to all farmers and the NFU have distributed to their members uh, as well. If there are ongoing issues, of course, I am happy to listen to what they may be, uh, and I would ask in the first instance, as I said before, for the farmers to meet the local SEPA, SEPA officials and uh, take them forward. I can assure Myrtle Fraser I am very familiar with these issues, representing uh, my own constituency which has had a number of flooding issues over the years, and the farmers likewise uh, have uh, welcomed that guidance that was issued. Question number five, Malcolm Chisholm. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what its position is on the implementation of minimum staffing levels for all professions in hospitals, as recommended by the former Chief Nursing Officer Anne Jarby and Professor Derek Mill. Minister Murray Mott. We are absolutely clear that quality of care for Scotland's people comes first demonstrating our full commitment to achieving the best possible health care outcomes. Scotland's people benefit from an NHS workforce of the highest quality and the highest staffing levels across our NHS than ever before. To ensure enough professional staff at the right levels are available when and where they need to be, NHS boards in Scotland are required to have workforce planning arrangements in place. In doing so, they are required to use evidence-based workload and workforce planning tools rather than fixed staffing ratios to assess numbers of nurses and where they should be deployed most effectively. Malcolm Chisholm. Um, I thank the Minister for that answer, but will she consider seriously all the recommendations and I think what was a very important editorial in the Journal of the Royal College of Physicians of Edinburgh uh, and one of the central recommendations of that uh, editorial was of course that there should be minimum uh, staffing uh, levels for all, professionals, uh, within, for all professions within hospital settings based upon best evidence, and that should be staffing levels that cover all hours of the day and night. I think there is a consensus uh, among many um, uh, health experts that that is the way forward. So will the government give serious consideration to it? Minister. Uh, well, of course, the Scottish Executive Nurses Director endorsed the views that is taken uh, in Scotland, as um, uh, do uh, other health care professionals, including Sir Robert Francis, Sir Brooke Keogh, 
and Professor Berwick, who have all believe that evidence-based tools are the best way. In Scotland, we don't talk about minimum staffing levels. We speak about safe staffing levels. We don't speak about of nurse-to-bed ratios. Nurses don't nurse beds, they nurse patients. Numbers of staff are determined according to the clinical needs of patients, not according to ratio level or numbers. And as I said, in Scotland, we used evidence-based tools to determine this, not a one-size-fits-all fixed staffing ratio. John Mason. Uh, given the commitment to preventative measures, I wonder if the Minister could say that in the long term the hope would be to move resources out less in hospital and more in the community? Minister. Well, of course, that is the uh, policy of the Scottish Government and with the uh, implementation of the integrated uh, health and social care, that is entirely the way that, in which we would want to move. Jim Hume. Uh, thank you. With a near doubling of numbers of children being admitted to hospitals for self-harm in some parts of Scotland, compounded by the often missed 18-week children and adolescent mental health treatment target, can the Minister advise what actions she is taking to effectively and efficiently administer NHS staffing resources for CAMH services? Minister. Well, of course, as the member knows, um, that is the responsibility of my colleague, uh, Jamie Hepburn, who has recently announced £15 million of extra resources for mental health uh, issues. Question six, Patrick Harvey. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what its position is on the privacy concerns raised by the Open Rights Group regarding the proposed amendments to the National Health Service Central Register Scotland Regulations 2006. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. Presenting officer, the Scottish Government has an unequivocal commitment to protecting and respecting the privacy of individuals. The Government is opposed to ID cards and does not propose to introduce any new national database. The measures on which we are consulting, which would result in limited additional verification and sharing of data from the NHS Central Register, will improve the accuracy of key statistics on Scotland's population and on migration, ensure that public sector organisations can verify who they are dealing with and to deliver the right services to the right people, support the tracing of missing persons, ensure that individuals who wish to can securely access online public services through the initiative My Account and accurately identify Scottish taxpayers, which is relevant to in protecting Scottish tax revenues and so protecting the delivery of public services. We will consider the responses to the consultation to ensure that the measures which are implemented and which will be scrutinised by Parliament adhere to our commitment to protect the personal data and the privacy of individuals. Patrick Harvey. Uh, thank you. I welcome the tone of the Deputy First Minister's opening comments there. The SNP in opposition did quite rightly join with others in campaigning against the ID cards legislation, which would have seen every citizen given a, a unique reference number linked to a central database, linked itself to a card scheme, uh, controlling access to public services and sharing data across government. Why then are we now seeing a proposal for a system which will give every citizen a unique reference number, linked to a central database, linked to a card scheme, sharing information across government and controlling access to public services? And why is this the subject of a low-profile consultation rather than a national debate? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the proposal is the subject to a consultation which will conclude in about a week's time and the government will consider the outcome of that consultation exercise. In relation to some, I am glad that Mr Harvey welcomed the tone of my remarks because the tone of my remarks are to, designed to provide uh, the reassurance to Parliament that the Government's position is absolutely crystal clear. We are opposed to ID cards and we do not propose to introduce any new national database. The National Health Service Central Register has existed in Scotland since the 1950s. Um, the, every citizen has an individual National Health Service number, a CHI number, which internationally is viewed as one of the strengths and foundations of the management of clinical care within the National Health Service. And what the Government is doing here is taking forward the consultation on a number of limited additional verification conditions. I can assure Patrick Harvey and Parliament and any concerned members of the public that the Government will be testing any reactions against its fundamental opposition to ID cards and its determination not to create any new national database. Neil Findlay. But many people have real concerns about the civil liberties implications of these proposals to change the register. And however, most people, including I suspect many in this chamber, myself included, don't 
know enough about it. Will the Minister uh, bring forward a debate in government time so we can discuss the proposals in full? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I, Mr Finlay will forgive me if I do not prescribe reading material to him on a weekly basis, <laughs> but the Scottish Government consultation the Scottish Government consultation has been available for members of the public and members of Parliament to contribute to, and it closes on the 25th of February. So if Mr Finlay wishes to make a submission to that, to that consultation, we will happily consider the issues. Now, as for, as for a debate, let's, let's, let's get the order of these things correct. We're having a consultation where we're inviting people's opinions. Any regulations that come forward will have to be scrutinised by Parliament, and Parliament will have its opportunity to consider all of these questions. Now, if members have any concerns about these issues, I encourage members to engage with the issues that have been raised in the consultation, which are fundamentally about ensuring that we are able to support the direction of public services to those who require those public services, and to ensure that an existing a National Health Service uh, Register, which has existed since the 1950s and which is the strength of our ability to deliver uh, the administration of clinical care to individuals in the country, is enhanced in any way that we can. And those tests about protecting the privacy of individuals and, the, and, and respecting uh, the privacy of individuals are at the heart of any decisions the Government will take on this matter. Question 7, Lewis MacDonald. The Scottish Government, when the Cabinet Secretary for Justice was first aware that Police Scotland intended to consult on a possible merger of A and B divisions. Cabinet Secretary, Michael Mathis. I was briefed on these proposals in early December. I uh, will expect Police Scotland to fully take account of the views expressed during the consultation and reflect on the proposals in light of these views. Bruce MacDonald. The Secretary will be aware that A Division of Police Scotland is responsible for policing not only Scotland's third city, but also the entire offshore oil industry across the North Sea. Will he, as a responsible minister, reject any change proposed by Police Scotland, which could leave Aberdeen as the only major city in Western Europe without a dedicated police division or without any responsible senior police officer of the rank of Chief Superintendent or above? Cabinet Secretary. So, as the member is aware, there has been an extensive consultation undertaken by Police Scotland on this issue, and there has also been an element of consultation taken forward by the Scottish Police Authority, who are responsible for scrutinising the actions of uh, Police Scotland in this issue as well. And I have discussed this issue with the Chief Constable this week, who has assured me that he will consider the views that have been submitted uh, to Police Scotland as part of uh, that consultation process. Uh, and likewise, I would also expect the Scottish Police Authority to fully scrutinise the proposals that have been taken forward by uh, Police uh, Scotland and to consider how they then respond to uh, the consultation results themselves. Question number eight, John Lamont. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government when Ministers last met representatives of NHS Borders and what issues were discussed. Minister, Jamie Hepburn. The Scottish Ministers meet regularly with representatives of the Board to discuss matters of interest to the people of the Borders. John Lamont. Um, I thank the Minister for that response. I very much welcome the Scottish Government's recent decision to increase NHS spending by £282 million. This was only made possible, of course, by spending decisions made by the Conservative-led UK Government, which resulted in the SNP having £300 million extra to spend in 2015-16. Now, whilst the average increase across Scotland is 3.4 per cent, NHS Borders is only getting 2.4 per cent. Can the Minister explain why NHS Borders has been shortchanged by £1.7 million? Minister. Mr Lamont needs to get his uh, figures correct. Of course, the increase that the Deputy First Minister announced for the NHS was £383 uh, million, pounds, not the figure uh, he quoted. And I'm very delighted to report that in terms of uh, uh, its funding, NHS Borders is already ahead of parity by 2.7 uh, per cent or £4.8 million. Pounds. This Government is delivering a fair funding deal for NHS Borders. Christine Graham. Thank you very much, President Officer. Can I say I recently met with NHS Borders and they are very satisfied with what's going on. Can I ask the uh, Minister if he will visit Hay Lodge Community Hospital in my constituency just to see the good work it's doing, despite the scaremongering by my colleague over there who is seeking to leave here and go to Westminster and will try any trick in the book. Minister. Well, uh, President Officer, I'll leave the local fracas to Ms Graham and Mr uh, Lamont, but if uh, Ms Graham uh, wants to invite me to write to me to invite me to visit her constituency, I'd be delighted to consider it. 
Thank you. We now move to First Minister's questions. Question number